I'm Ian Medjugorje and I'm with What's Your Name? My name is Pat O'Connor. And Pat, I met you in the Holy Land, now you're here in Medjugorje. How often have you been here, Pat? We are here since last Tuesday. We're here for a week with a group of 66 people. And your the first time here? Or how no, we come twice a year. You come twice a year? Yeah, yeah. Why do you come back all the time, Pat? Because Our Lady calls us back. Yeah? Our Lady calls us back. Yeah, we get the urge to come back and Our Lady calls us back. Yes, I see it in your eyes. You yeah, have yeah, the lady yeah, smile. You know, yeah. people say you can see Our Lady in the eyes oh, of yeah, the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what is so special for you about Metrogoy? Well, Metrogoy is very special because uh, first time I came was in 2005. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, was, I was doing well in financially, financially and everything. And uh, I believe our, the law, our Lord and Our Lady was preparing me for something. Uh, and shortly after that, I lost all my worldly possessions, most of them, you know. Wow. And but I was able to cope. Mm -hmm. I had faith. I our Lady, trust in Our Lady and Our Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Um, after that, then I began bringing groups back here myself, you know, mm -hmm. and we got the Holy Land as well. And that's very that's, met. My, that's yeah. my mission now, yeah, Thomas. Yeah. yeah. And why do you like Medjugorje so much? Well, I like Medjugorje because the peace, the peace here, mm -hmm. you know. Did you receive any healing? Um, your places, places? Not, um, not instant miracles, but there is healings in my life, you know, over time, mm -hmm. different healings. You have been Catholic all your life? Practicing Catholic? Catholic, Catholic all my life, yeah. All yeah. my life, yeah. And uh, a very sit in the fins Catholic up to 2005, I'd say, you know. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, the Lord, the Holy Spirit must have given me a nudge. So I'm doing a little bit more now for him. I'd like to do more, but... Yeah, I see it. You're smiling. You have the, <laughs> you have the spirit in you. Uh, thanks very much, Thomas. Good to meet you. And what would you tell people, like, how to get that spirit? A lot of people yearn for that peace and that silent joy in the heart, you know? What would you tell them? Well, for me, I, when I came here first, I was looking for signs and wonders mm -hmm. and all anxious about when I didn't receive them, you know? Mm -hmm. But I come now and I don't look for signs and wonders mm -hmm. and uh, graces and graces and blessings will happen. It may not happen here this week and it will happen afterwards mm -hmm. as well, you know? So. Mm -hmm. Continue on to just relax and be in the peace of Our Lady here and mm -hmm. be in the pr her presence and Our Lord, you know. So you brought a cop lot of groups. Did you see people change? And how can you describe some cases? You don't have to name names, just what happened here to people? I have kind of described some cases. People had wonderful healings and uh, one man had a healing uh, cured from cancer 11 years ago in Divine Mercy Church down in Super Nancy, you know. Wow. <coughs> and Completely healed. Completely healed of cancer. Well, it completely healed. He got remission for 11 years, you know. So, wow. Wow. and uh, thank God he's he's in good form. And there's other things like that, you know. And uh, um, my my, I don't want to say, but my own family members, mm -hmm. things improved for them as well. I was here yesterday, and my daughter was doing an interview, so I was praying. So, she she took me back. She phoned me yesterday evening, she got, it, got the job, she got an interview, you know, so uh -huh, yeah. we're blessed to be here, Thomas, and lovely to meet you. And for the daughter, and you know, yeah, how yeah. beautiful. Right? Yeah, yeah. And you, you, you know, confession is so important here in Medjugorje. Oh, confession, yeah, so what important. What would you tell people who are scared, maybe, you know, 20 years, they didn't go to confession, what would you tell them? Not to be scared. I had a man with me here 12 months ago, yeah. and uh, he told me he cried he told me he went to confession after 40 years mm -hmm. he went to confession twice in the one week he rang me up about 10 times during the year to thank me for bringing him here mm -hmm. and because his life changed there was so much weight taken off him you know his life changed mm -hmm. so confessional is very important mm -hmm. we don't go to confessional often enough at home mm -hmm. and there's wonderful priests down there and they're very caring and they're giving Christ's message you know so mm -hmm. that's beautiful nothing to be afraid of do not, nothing to be afraid of, you know. We're all sinners. I made mistakes in life as well, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I see you pray the rosary. You have Padre Pio here. Is that your favorite saint? Padre Pio, yeah. Padre Pio. Well, I have uh, a story to tell about Padre Pio Please as well. Yeah. I was born with very bad asthma from yeah. birth. Mm -hmm. I was carted away to hospital ten times maybe in my first ten years. Mm -hmm. And I heard the nurses and doctors saying I nearly died about three times to put oxygen on me and everything. Mm -hmm. So um, back in the 60s, I remember my mother writing to Padre Pio for a, to intercede for me. Oh. Now, I didn't know who Padre Pio was and I didn't care who he was, you know. But I remember a letter coming back from his office. Yeah. 
and um, in 1960 something I don't know the exact year but I remember my mother reading a letter out uh -huh. it was someone uh -huh. transcribed it in English for him but uh, it may not be Pedro Pia that wrote it could be his office but I felt um, he was interceding for me you know uh -huh. and um, later on then I, 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 I'm all through life with me asthma and was sort of controlled until the year 2000. I got very bad, well, my lungs got very bad. I met a wonderful consultant in Dublin mm -hmm. and who gave me a new lease of life. He, I won't go into the medical things he did, but one of the findings was he found polyps in my sinuses. Polyps, so he says, I'll get... I'll send you to a man in the matter private in Dublin that will search out. Mm -hmm. He'll burn up the polyps. Mm -hmm. So he gave me medication. It was around the time in Ireland uh, all the Padre Pio masses were starting up, monthly masses, uh -huh. and I was going to one, I was going to them all, you know. Uh -huh. So I was uh, still asking Padre Pio and all the other saints to intercede for me. Uh -huh. But, anyways, I got an appointment in the matter private maybe a month after, uh -huh. and this other consultant he was going to burn up my polyps. Uh -huh. But um, he had the x-rays and all, and the white dots were in my sinuses. Mm -hmm. But um, when he put, he put a big camera up my, up my nose into my sinuses, he couldn't find them, they were gone. So I didn't say it to him at the time, but I said to myself discreetly, Padre Pio, thank you. Wow. So I, I got back... Goosebumps all over, yeah? I go back... I've come 15 years after I bring groups back to Padre Pio's in yeah. San Giovanni. Uh -huh. You bring now to Padre Pio's yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a faithful servant. Ah oh, well, it's nice to say thanks. Yes, and absolutely. In one of the rooms in in San Giovanni, there's letters from people who has requested yeah. uh, him to intercede. So I had told the story to my group, mm -hmm. and they says your mother's letter could be there somewhere. You know, yeah. so it's amazing. I get goosebumps all yeah, over. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you pray the rosary too, I see. And I pray the rosary. And why? What is so beautiful about the rosary? Ah, the rosary. Well, we were. When we were children, my grandmother lived with us. Yeah. My mother, father, eight children, uh -huh. and my grandmother, so she taught us the rosary. My yeah. parents were busy, you know, so uh -huh. I would have a great love for the rosary from her since childhood. Yeah. And she was able to tell me that time about Fatima, Fatima as well, uh -huh. Our Lady of Fatima, you know, so... So it's it, the beautiful education of the grandparents, parents. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, exactly, Thomas. Tangible, yeah. beautiful, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. And yeah. what's your favorite place in Medjugorje? Do you have a favorite place? Favorite place would be ah, I like going down. I took time out yesterday from the ch from the group, and I went and I said the rosary at Father Slapko's grave. Mm -hmm. I came up to the statue and I said a few more prayers. Mm -hmm. Like, it's peace all over. You can go to Blue Cross and you can go anywhere, but there's peace. Mm -hmm. My back is at me at the moment, so I was only able to do Apparition Hill. Uh, my group is doing the big hill in the morning, Crucifix. I mightn't be able to do it, but that's okay too. You get, you, you get the same grace and blessings down here, you know. Absolutely. Yes. And if you compare like Medjugorje to the Holy Land now, what is the difference? Can you describe that a bit? Ah, uh, the whole, this is different. Our Lady is appearing here daily, mm -hmm. uh, giving the messages and uh, the great sense of peace, like down there on the, the, the church ground at 20 to 6. I was down there, I wasn't there last night, and I was there the night before, but as Our Lady begins to appear, I just go into a sort of a sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, when this, and then it's all silent, so when the prayers start up again, I, w I wake up, you know. But the difference, the Holy Land is very emotional. Mm -hmm, yeah. You're walking in the footsteps of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, a, it's beautiful. If any man can do it at all, you know, there's people people paying four and five thousand euro to go to world cup matches and uh, but like it's a must for any christian if they can at all to go to holy land you know once in their lifetime i'm blessed i can go every year now because mm -hmm. people just ask me to bring them you know so as you work for the kingdom everything is given to you right pardon as you work for the kingdom everything yeah. is given yeah to yeah you. exactly yeah yeah we're going Thomas. to the holy land now you go to maryland now no, isn't that beautiful we got to fatim as well Fatima and, yeah, as well. It's on Giovanni yeah, and the last year group asked me to bring them to scarabandel in spain wow and you did yeah we did John. how was that yeah. it was different mm -hmm. it was um it was nice and peaceful as well, but we had a beautiful experience up mm -hmm. the mount, up up the pines, up the hills on the Saturday evening, mm -hmm. where a group of uh, religious order came up, or the home of the mother nuns, young nuns and priests, mm -hmm. came up and they had a prayer meeting, and uh, 
they said the rosary and it was beautiful up there and the priests scattered around the field and they heard confessions mm -hmm. right. and but there's nothing in the village there's one hotel mm -hmm. one shop and nothing else in it you know so it was it was it was uh, we went for five days and we're going on guys when they came home they told their friends so i'm going back again with six at the moment this year mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. And what would you tell people at the end of the... In oh, first, uh, there's another question. Oh, it, it seems to be very, very important to learn to surrender. You know, the surrender novena, Don Dolindo, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I have it in my bag. Uh, you have it in your bag. And, you know, I think this is the time we all have to learn to surrender, be guided by the Holy Spirit. How would you explain it to a person, how to be to surrender and to live a life in God's will? Well, first of all, I think we have to pray a little bit first, you know, to... Mm -hmm to get to that stage where we can surrender. It's not just if, 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 if people are, or if I was in so, some mess in my life, it's hard to surrender straight away, you know, because you surrender for five minutes and you take it back again, you know. Fight, Which huh? You learn how to pray. For, for me, I learned how to pray first and be peaceful and then surrender, you know. Mm -hmm. And even with experience, you take your problems back again, you know, but you can always hand them back again to the Lord, you know, but uh, the nine-day surrender is great. I have it in my bag now. I can't take it out now, but... Don't worry. We, I, I've prayed it with the people already. Don Dolindo, no? Yeah, yeah. Surrender yeah. Novena, you find it on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And at the end, what would you tell people why to come to Medjugorje? What would I tell? Why they should come to Medjugorje? Uh, I believe they're called. If they get any inkling at all mm -hmm. or in their head, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they should consider coming, you know. Yeah. Uh, we are sort of low-key um, people. Uh, if you come to, to Metagori and you, there's groups here and they're praying all the time. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was putting some of my people up. So I had to find a balance. Mm -hmm. I had to find a balance. You know, so I meet people in my daily life out in restaurants and uh, in the bars. And they say, you're doing pilgrimages. Well, I say, I don't, I don't call them pilgrimages. I call them spiritual holidays. Yeah. First of all, we're... First yeah. of all, we're here for the spiritual end of it, yeah. and uh, secondly, we have fellowship, yeah. and Enjoy. and the fellowship. Enjoy. And I'm not great at staying in touch with the whole group because there's loads of people, different mm -hmm. people come. Out. But there's a great bond within the group themselves, and they keep in touch with mm -hmm. with the with themselves, you know. And uh, but if you get any sort of a an inkling at all to come to Metagori, please come. That's what I'd say to the people, yeah, because Our Lady, the blessings and graces you'll get after, it's wonderful, you know. And do you have a website or anything they can find you if they want to go with you? Or I said it, 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 it comes with the flow. It just comes with the flow. They tell their friends. I don't advertise. They tell their friends because, you know, um, I think it's St. Francis says uh, about the, you, you don't you know carry the message discreetly and if necessary use words you know mm -hmm. you know so exactly and what is the power of the rosary for you uh, the power of the rosary like is uh, great things have happened and uh, mm -hmm. i'm a sinner mm -hmm. i'm a sinner and people like i do be humble people come to me to pray for 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 their families or certain mm -hmm. things has gone on in their life and they do get great results because of me praying the rosary and I'm not worthy of it, but our Lord answers their prayer through me, you know, or, and Our Lady, you know. So beautiful. And the Divine Mercy Chaplet, you pray that as well? I pray that for the Holy Souls. For the Holy Souls. Yeah, yeah. We should not forget, no? To we shouldn't for forget, souls. no. We shouldn't forget for the Holy Souls, yeah. At one point, somebody will pray for us then as well. Yeah, no, I yeah? I went to... The, the virus knocked the stuffing out of me, spiritually. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I used to watch three masses maybe a day on the internet. Mm -hmm. And then I went off the internet altogether. I just, God forgive me, I went off, I didn't watch anything. But, uh, mm -hmm. And I sort of stopped praying. The churches were closed. There was a few churches that kept us going. Mm -hmm. One religious orders, the Capuchins, they had adoration all the time mm -hmm. in uh, Rahini in Dublin. Mm -hmm. And they kept us going. Other priests were able to give us communion outside their closed mass times. Mm -hmm. And thank God they kept us going. But I felt a bit let down and... Uh, but I know it was the other fellow at me, you know. But what was your question, sorry? It was the Divine Mercy. The, the, the Divine Mercy, yeah. But the, as I say, I, did, I, I had lost uh, the lack of prayer. Uh -huh. But I've, our Lord has waked me up at night time. <laughs> we around three o'clock three o'clock me too three o'clock in the night, right? I, know. Night. I have and to it's a little prayer it's enough already you know? yeah yeah, yeah. that's when I say the uh, 
the chaplet divine mercy yeah, for the people good. who are dying and the people who are the most forgotten souls in purgatory, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's lovely to meet you, Thomas. Okay, big pleasure doing that interview with you. God bless you, yeah. God bless you, Thomas.